All right, now we're going to head to Southeast Asia, Malaysia, where the government there is turbocharging its ambitious plans for the EV sector and AI, looking for growth opportunities in the region. Remember, we spoke to the trade minister recently. This is the second part of the conversation that I had with him. Listen to this. I think what's important uh, in the EV sector is we have launched the uh, industrial master plan and we have also launched the energy transition roadmap. Uh, and what is important uh, in both uh, plans is meeting our net zero uh, target by 2050. And to achieve that, EV is one way, right? Uh, and uh, for, for Malaysia, again, we, we are focusing a lot of investment in the right sectors. Uh, digital sector is one, digital economy. And the other one is on the green uh, sector, where we have seen an increase in renewable energy as companies demand more of uh, green energy for their operations in this region as well. You know, one of the considerations that you have to take when you're, um, as you mentioned, and you've mentioned it a couple of times, attracting inward investment from whether it's within the region or, or further afield is um, the cost of doing business, the ease of doing business and also salaries. I recently spoke to the Prime Minister of Vietnam, the Prime Minister of mm -hmm. uh, Thailand and also the Speaker of the House of Representatives in the Philippines, and they all talked about being willing and I'm putting you on the spot here to um, see some kind of blanket wage rise for the minimum wage um, across the ASEAN nations. Do you think that's something that Malaysia would be on board with? I know it has a sort of very different meanings, I think, perhaps for your country um, relative to some of these other players. Is it something that, that you'd potentially be on board with? And what would the trade implications and FDI implications be? Yeah. I think it, it is important that to acknowledge that we need to ensure uh, that wages do go up. Um, I mean, if you look at Malaysia's economy fundamentals, uh, uh, our inflation is uh, quite manageable. Uh, in fact, our inflation today uh, in the year of 2023 is around 2.5%, and unemployment continues to be low, uh, also mm. around 3.3%. Um, so if we, based on that fundamentals, we must ensure that whatever increase in wages is linked to increase in productivity. And that's why uh, I was talking about investments in the green and digital, uh, green and uh, digital economy, because it increases the economic complexity uh, of a country and of its industries, and therefore this should link to increase in wages. Uh, we recently, two years ago, uh, had an increase in the minimum wage, uh, and now people are talking about progressive uh, wage, uh, and that can only be achieved if we increase productivity. So wages needs to be linked to productivity, or else companies will find it very difficult. Uh, to implement uh, an increase uh, in compensation. Yeah, and I think you're already seeing that perhaps with the, the voluntary wage gains that, that you're talking about already. I, I'll take that as not a yeah. no, but it's a work in progress as I'm <laughs> yeah. single-handedly trying to organise a, a deal in the region. You can see that. Um, the key word there, though, for me was productivity. Talk to me about artificial intelligence, because I know one of the sort of banner flags ambitions that you have is to become a generative AI hub in Malaysia. What does that look like in practice and, and what does that take? Yes, uh, I mentioned the investment in Malaysia just now. I think I'll just share with you the number that's been approved, uh, which is about 225 billion ringgit, and of which more than half, close to 70% is in the digital economy. And when you talk about digital economy, Julia, um, we also talk about the uh, Malaysia becoming an now, in fact, is a data center hub for the region. Uh, we are no longer talking about just the simple CPUs, but not talking about the GPUs, which can then power AI. Um, but then we can bring the whole ecosystem into Malaysia. We have AI factories, we call it now, instead of data centers. Uh, and recently, you know, even uh, we had a visit uh, and we, NVIDIA announced uh, uh, um, venturing into Malaysia with other companies to support uh, advancement of AI because AI, you're right, will bring an in increase in productivity. Of course, there are concerns about AI uh, in general about uh, the impact to society, uh, but you can't deny the fact that AI will uh, bring uh, better quality of life if uh, applied uh, correctly uh, in terms of increasing in, pro in productivity, for example. Yeah, and you have to change too because it could also mean that some jobs yeah. become obsolete, a great many jobs become obsolete. How do you tackle just yeah. very quickly on that point that the fear perhaps that some people have that maybe their job will be automated or it simply won't be around in the next five to ten years? Yeah, yeah that's why we need a just a transition uh, and an equitable one as well. Uh, I completely agree with you. Um, the job of the future may be very different uh, given the advancement in technology, especially generative AI. 
Uh, and we're seeing that. And you know, I'll give you a simple example, Julia. Even we, we were talking about EV uh, early on. Um, so, I mean, that's not uh, really AI, but a lot of uh, mechanics in a lot of workshops are now worried whether their jobs is still relevant when people, when, you know, we are targeting, you know, big number of uh, shift in uh, uh, procurement of cars, right? For example, um, they, so if you don't have any engine anymore, what do would they do right um and similarly for ai there's many uh, other jobs that will be involved so we need to ensure uh, the reskilling the upskilling but at the same time preparing for the new jobs of the future as well